The following program is a production of Truth For The World. Day by day and with each passing moment Strength I find to meet my trials here Trusting in my Father's wise bestowment I've no cause for worry or for fear When we think about obtaining the crown, of course that has to do with uh, spirituality, spiritually, and we're going to talk about various aspects of that this afternoon for a few moments. But uh, all of this has to do, as he said, with the soul. In uh, Luke 12, there's a rich farmer whose fields brought forth plentifully. Uh, there was a person who came to Christ and he said, Lord, uh, my brother and I are having a problem <laughs> and we want you to settle this matter. And the Lord uh, told him that there were things more important than physical things. In fact, in uh, verse 15, he says, A man's life consisteth not of the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And then he said that there was a certain rich farmer whose fields brought forth plentifully. And he uh, said, I'll have to tear down my barns and build greater, and I don't know what to do with all of this. And, uh, he, but he said, I'll say to my soul, Soul? Take thine eat, uh, uh, eat, drink, and be merry. And, uh, you know, the Lord uh, spoke to him that night, and he said, uh, you know, this night thy soul is required of thee. Whose are these things going to be which thou hast accumulated? Uh, but he preached to himself about uh, things. Look here what all things I have. That's the most important part of life is things. And a lot of us, uh, a lot of people in this world emphasize things, they forget their souls. And so he preached himself right into hell. You know, I've been accused of preaching people right into hell. Well, here was a man who actually did it. Preached himself right into hell. Things are my most important possession. He should have preached, my soul is my most important possession. And so uh, it matters a lot of times uh, not what we're uh, taught. We can be taught the truth, but in the final analysis, what do we preach to ourselves? Well, we need to preach that our souls are our most valuable possession. And that has to do with obtaining the crown, the ultimate crown. Now, we could talk about the crown that was well known in the first century. Uh, last evening we talked about the race, and they raced for a crown. Uh, it was made of olive leaves or some type of, of uh, wreath that went on the head, and uh, the winner of the race would, would receive this crown. And then he would go forth uh, to the king or the ruler, and uh, of course he was in this procession and people rejoiced and he rejoiced that he had won the race and he was the champion and then he would go and lay this crown before the ruler. And so uh, the Bible has reference to that when the uh, ultimate blessing that shall happen to Christians is that we shall approach the Lord and receive our crown, and uh, Revelation 2.10, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give unto thee a crown of life. And to present this crown to Jehovah God, and to be able to be ushered into heaven uh, for eternity, uh, is just something that is really beyond the imagination when you think of it. Now I want us to think of several aspects of what the Bible talks about relative to crown. I want you to turn first to Psalm 66, 65, and I want to notice verse 11, where the Bible says, Thou crownest God 
Thou crownest the year with thy goodness. Thy paths drop fatness. And so please notice, or thou ridest upon the uh, clouds. Now please notice that here it is interesting that he says, God, thou crownest the year with thy goodness. Now it is interesting that the Lord works in nature. The Lord, uh, his work, his handiwork is visible everywhere, right? We look at the stars and we see the handiwork of God and we look at the trees and we see the handiwork of God. We just see the handiwork of God in so many places. Psalm 19.1, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where his voice is not heard. Well, we see the uh, crowning glory of uh, Jehovah God in, in many ways. We see his, the, the glory of God when he crowns the, uh, our labors, our labors here upon this earth. When I come to this, this beautiful area and I see the beautiful corn and I see other crops that are grown here, I think about how that God crowneth our labors, okay? Now, when does he do that? Well, he doesn't do it in, in January, does he? He doesn't do it in uh, May or June. When does he crown uh, us with the harvest? Well, you who farm, you who've been uh, around farming and so forth, you know that there's a certain time in which God crowns the harvest and uh, gives the harvest. Notice here, let's just notice the context here, beginning with verse uh, 9. Thou visiteth the earth and waterest it. Now, it's interesting in 2 Corinthians 6, 1, Paul said we're workers together with God. Well, we're workers together with God in planting crops, in planting gardens, in planting the trees, in planting the wheat, and in planting the cotton, and in planting the corn, and in planting other things. And we do that in the spring generally here in this country, and we reap the harvest in the fall. Now that's, that's life, isn't it? Isn't that what life's about? Thou visiteth the earth. Think about the goodness of Jehovah God. And waterest it. Okay? Thou greatly enricheth it. The river of God is full of water. Thou providest them grain when thou so prepared the earth. Thou waterest its furrows abundantly. Well, we saw some of God's gracious watering of the earth last evening, didn't we? Thou waterest its furrows abundantly. Thou settlest the, riches, uh, the ridges thereof. Thou makest it soft with showers. Thou blessest the springing thereof. Thou crownest the year with its goodness. Now when does he place the crown on the year? Well, toward the end of the year, right? You plant in the spring, you, you plow, you cultivate, uh, and uh, you fertilize, and you do e these other things, uh, planting the crops, and you take care of them, and what happens? Well, God puts His part in. The water, the sun, the minerals in the soils, this type of thing, and then you see it grow and grow and grow, and then God crownest your labors in the fall. Thou crownest the year with goodness. Thy paths drop fatness. They drop upon the pastures of the wilderness, and the hills are girded with joy. When does joy come? It comes with the harvest, doesn't it? The pastures are clothed with flocks. And I see many flocks around here. The valleys also are covered over with grain. They shout for joy. They also sing. Now my friends, a person who 
sits on his couch and watches TV all the time. And as Solomon says, he, he's like a door hinge. He lies on his bed and he'll roll this way. And then he'll roll. It's time to get up. It's time to be working. It's time to be plowing. It's time to be planting. Here he is lying on the bed. He rolls this way. And then he rolls this way like the hinge of the door, you see. Well, he's not going to get things done. He's not going to reap the harvest in the fall at the end of the year. Why? Because he's not willing to get out. He's not willing to work. He's not willing to plant. He's not willing to cultivate. He's not willing to fertilize. He's not willing to get the weeds out. He won't be prepared for the harvest, right? And so, uh, it may be too dry for him to get out. Or it may be too wet for him to get out. Or it may be too cold for him to get out. But I'll tell you what, he's not going to, to come with the harvest in the fall. Now, that's the way life is. We're born. It's... Uh, Beginning of the year. Not long as springtime and we're young. And uh, a lot of people too busy to serve the Lord when they get up of age. I'm too young. I've got to sow my wild oats. I've got, I have to do other things. You know, I can't serve the Lord because uh, I, I'm just too, there's, there are too many other things. You know, school and all that. Well, then you get to be Grown a little bit later, and uh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the young men now. I'm thinking about the ladies now. And uh, by the way, I've got to go to college. I've got to learn to, to uh, you know, what I'm going to do with my life. And then we get a little uh, older. I, I, I can't, Lord, I can't be faithful to you now. I have children. I have too much time. I, I have to make a living and by the way, if I make anything of myself, I'm going to have to work hard right now, Lord. Now, later on, later on, uh, I'll spend time with you, but I've, I've got to please my wife, and I've got to get some money in the bank. I've started a new business. You know, I, I have spent a lot of time on that. I just don't have time for thee, Lord. But you give me a little longer. Let my business get underway. And uh, allow my children to get up a little older and, and not as dependent on me, I'll have plenty of time. And a person uh, ultimately uh, says, Well, Lord, uh, I'm just too old now. I'm just too old. We're not going to have the harvest unless we have the, the plowing and the planting and the fertilizing and the watering and the cultivating. When the harvest comes, we're not going to have a harvest, a spiritual harvest. Okay? And so if the Lord is going to crown our labor spiritually, aren't we going to have to be about His business? And uh, parents, uh, you have responsibility here. And that is, you bring up your children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord from the time that you get them out of the hospital. And you, even before, you be talking to them about the Lord and how blessed you are and how that you're going to dedicate their, them to the Lord. And you have a Bible study with them and you have prayer with them. And you have these times when they realize that the Lord rules in your house. And you, you live for the Lord. You live for His glory. And so, uh, how long are we going to wait to begin serving the Lord? God bless you for serving Him early. We're to serve the Lord. We're to dedicate, it our, dedicate ourselves unto the Lord in the days of our youth. Because the evil days come 
And the years draw nigh when uh, sometimes we say, well, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm just too old to do that. And uh, we give up on ourselves. And so we need, if the Lord's going to crown our lives, we're going to have to start early. Can't wait till the last. I want to notice Psalm 71, 18 with you. Yea, even when I am old and gray-headed, O God, forsake me not. Now that's been the righteous person's goal all of his life, especially with his own children and his own life. Until I have declared thy strength unto the next generation thy might to every one that is to come. I tell you, this congregation exists and the congregation from which you come exists because of the great saints of the past who dedicated and given their lives for the cause of Christ. And they have made many sacrifices. And your heritage in man exists because of the dedication of those in the past who loved the truth, who dedicated their lives to it, who lived for it. And that's the reason why often that you and I are Christians. If you weren't reared in Christian families, Bless your heart, you're living right, and you're doing what's right, and you've dedicated yourself, yourself to the Lord, and you have reared your children and brought them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. I want us to <clears throat> notice another way that the word crown is used in the Scriptures. Turn to Philippians the Apostle Paul uh, said any number of endearing statements, but I want you to notice an, an endearing statements. but here, here's one with, with which I am very impressed. Wherefore, my brethren, beloved, this is Philippians 4.1, and long far, my joy and crown. So stand, stand fast in the Lord, my beloved. Now here is the use of the word crown. And I'll tell you what, the Apostle Paul wanted a crown. Ultimately. Did you know that those whom the Apostle Paul taught were very much a crown to him. <clears throat> Turn to 1 Thessalonians 2.19. To the Thessalonians, Paul said, For what is our hope? Now he's talking about the second coming of Christ. What is our hope in the second coming? Our joy, our crown of glorying, are not even ye before our Lord Jesus at his coming? For ye are our glory and our joy. I appreciate what Brother Mosier has said and the great emphasis that he has given to soul winning, to reaching the lost. When you study the life of the Apostle Paul, you realize that he was running toward that crown. And I'll tell you how he was going to get it. He was going to get it by loving souls and teaching others. 
In Romans 1, 13 through 15, Paul said, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was hindered hitherto, that I might bear some fruit among you also as among others of the Gentiles. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, to the wise and to the foolish. And I'm ready, as much as in me is, to come and preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. The Apostle Paul was striving for a crown. And he said, you Philippians are my crown. And you Thessalonians are my crown. Because I've had the privilege of teaching you. And I've had the privilege of encouraging you. And as the Apostle Paul would get over, uh, older, it would seem that he would have a tendency to think back more and to think of those brethren who were what they were, soldiers of Jesus Christ, because of the Apostle Paul's teaching of the gospel. It's important to seek after the crown. And I realize that the older I get, more keenly. And I have a tendency to think back and to reminisce. And I don't want to live in the past. But I tell you, if the Apostle Paul could say to the Philippians and say to the Thessalonians, You're my crown. You're going to be my crown of glory in the day of judgment. I believe we can do that. But you know what? The harvest has to begin back here in springtime. And as soon as we have opportunity and we're invited into the vineyard to work and to help bring forth the harvest, we need to do that. If you haven't obeyed the gospel and you're of accountable age, you need to become a Christian. And you need to realize keenly that you are a debtor to carry the gospel to your neighbor and to talk to others about the Lord Jesus Christ. How are we going to have the harvest and the crown up here at the Lord's second coming if we haven't worked during the time of the plowing and the sowing and the fertilizing and the watering and the cultivating back here? And so it's a matter of urgency, isn't it? Thank God for those who have dedicated their lives to the cause and are not waiting to do so. Now turn to 2 Timothy, and then the lesson will be yours. In 2 Timothy 4, the Apostle Paul said, <clears throat> For I am already being offered, poured out as an offering to God. His time was about up. They were about to come get him in this Roman prison and take him and kill him because of Christ. I am already being offered and the time of my departure. He's leaving. He's going to leave the walks of men. 
I'm departing into another world. The time of my departure is at hand. It come, American Standard. I have fought the good fight. He often used the picture of boxing. I have fought a good fight. Ever since he obeyed the gospel, he had been fighting the fight of Jesus Christ. I have finished the race course. I have been running. I have been striving. I have had many difficulties. And I look at the Apostle Paul And then I look at me and I sometimes say, Cates, compared to Paul, how many difficulties have you had? How many beatings have you had? I don't know how many times the Apostle Paul totally was beaten up. I know one time he was probably killed or might have been killed in Lystra. Stoned, left for dead. I don't know how many times total, number of times he mentioned in 2 Corinthians that he had received 40 stripes save one, 39 stripes with rods. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. I've kept the doctrine. I have manifested the teaching of God. I have taught the scheme of redemption. And I have stood for the truth. And I have carried the gospel all over the world. And I've carried it to Rome. And they're about to kill me for it. But I've been faithful. Henceforth, for this reason, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, the day of judgment, when all of us are going to receive our crowns, those who are righteous. But not to me only, but also to all them that have loved His appearing. Am I prepared for the Lord to come back? If you would like to learn more about God's Word with a free Bible correspondence course, then write us at Truth For The World or visit us online at truthfortheworld.org. Truth For The World is a work of the Duluth Church of Christ in cooperation with churches of Christ throughout the world. Day by day, and with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here. Trusting in my Father's wise bestowal,